jam on me. <laughs> I can't hear you. The television doesn't work in two ways. <laughs> no, I... Because I, yesterday was Father's Day. My son made me a breakfast in bed, which was great. It involved a lot of jam. <laughs> Nothing else, in fact. Just jam. Dad of jam. Happy Father's Day, Dad. <laughs> which is kind of annoying, because my son's 28. You know... <laughs> Kidding. Kidding. He's only eight, but he'd be jam. I'm not, I'm, I'm not keen on jam. It's too sugary for me. I like savoury stuff like, you know, beef. <laughs> Can you get beef jam? Do you know, uh, jam, though, uh, where I come from originally, it's called jam, but I guess it's called jelly in America. I can't remember from a citizenship test. I think it is, yeah. <laughs> and the final question. Jam? Or jelly. I'm like jelly. Welcome to America, son. <laughs> anyway, I, I, you know what I don't like? I don't like uh, peanut butter and jelly. And I'll tell you why. Because I'm deathly allergic to peanut butter. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> but if that was true, it might be interesting. <laughs> Which would really help, given by the fact you probably realise by now I've got nothing. <laughs> It was Father's Day yesterday. I didn't have to do anything all day, you know. I didn't... Because usually, you know, you know if you've seen this show before, I prepare like crazy. <laughs> I get here all ready with all my stuff and, you know, cue cards and uh, the band are all like... Da -da 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 -da. And I come in and I'm like, hey, guys that I don't know and never see in my life. And then I come over here and I'm like, hey, what's some... Oh, yeah. Topical jokes written by, you know, bright people that went to college. <laughs> But I don't have any of that. I'm a high school dropout from another country. <laughs> I didn't even drop out of an American high school. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Do you know they asked me to go back? Uh, to, when I got this show, they asked me to go back to my school and talk to the kids. I'm like, well, what am I going to say to the kids? I recommend dropping out of school and being a blackout drunk for 20 years, kids. <laughs> <laughs> then, boom, CBS in the middle of the night. What the hell am I going to say to them? <laughs> I was going to talk to you about jam. I forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> all right, more jam later. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Look, I know you're trying to help, but I'm very worried. I'm very worried tonight about my tie didn't hit the right... I like my tie to hit run about here. And if it, it does, as long as I stand like that. But if I stand like that, it's too long, look. And then it looks like I'm trying to point at something. <laughs> Do you think that's why ties have got that little pointy thing on the end? That's what it is, because they could just be squared off. No one would notice, but you could put the pointy thing in like, hey, ladies. See anything you like? <laughs> Follow the arrow <laughs> to find hidden treasure. Yep, it's a great day for America, everybody. Great day for America. <laughs> It's a great effort. It's a very bad day for John and Kate, for John and Kate Plus Eight. You know John and Kate from John and Kate Plus Eight? You know who I'm talking about. They filed for divorce today. Aww. No, who saw that coming? <laughs> the show's going to go on, though. They're just going to change the title to John and Kate Minus Half of John's Stuff. <laughs> 
That's not true. This is my own, my own bitterness talking. I'm sorry. I, I don't really mean it. You know, this week in LA, you can see LA out there. Look out the window. <laughs> They've got mobile laboratories going around offering free STD tests. <laughs> they expect to do more than 2,000 tests this week, and that's just on Andy Dick. What happens when they start using other people? <laughs> ah, and... Do you know what else starts today? Wimbledon, the tennis tournament starts today. Uh, count me as one of the people that don't give a rat's ass. I hate tennis. <laughs> I do, I hate tennis, it's not a sport, it's just guys in tight shorts sliding around slapping balls. It's like a party at Elton John's house. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know a lot of people enjoy the tennis. I don't like, I don't like watching tennis on TV, it's garbage. Bump, 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 bump. It's like Pong. <laughs> remember Pong? Is that what it's called, Pong or Kong? I can't never remember. It's Kong when monkeys do it. Anyway, Pong. <laughs> Anyway, tennis is rubbish, except, of course, when it's the US Open, because that's on CBS, and suddenly it gets better. <laughs> Do you know what's sad today, though? You know, uh, you know the vibrating bed? You know the uh, vibrating beds? The, yeah, the, the, in the hotels, they've got the name Magic Fingers. You know, the... <laughs> well, the man who in I invented the vibrating... The vibrate blah, 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 blah. <laughs> what's wrong with you, Greg? I'm so excited about Wimbledon. Uh, <laughs> The man who invented the vibrating bed has just died. He was aged 92. Aww. I know, apparently he ran out of quarters. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, that's terrible. I, that's not fun. I shouldn't make fun of that. The, very, the vibrating bed industry is very shaken up by this. Uh... <laughs> sorry. His last words were, woohoo. Uh, do you know what? I lost my virginity on one of those beds? <laughs> Actually, I lost my virginity to one of those beds. <laughs> But these days, if I want magic fingers, I'll just go to Regis Philbin's house. That's, uh... <laughs> hey, Craig! Uh... <laughs> you don't need magic fingers, uh, you know, the machine to make the bed vibrate. What you want to do, take a lot of crystal meth. Then the bed will vibrate. <laughs> <laughs> you seen the people that take the crystal meth? I'm like, what? What? Look at you! Your, your teeth all fall out. Like, yeah, I'm having a great time. <laughs> People take crystal meth. I think it's because they want to look like the old ladies that sat next to the guillotine during the French Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> Off with his head, I say. Off with his head. Why are you talking in an English accent? This is the French Revolution. <laughs> Don't ask questions. <laughs> Off with the head is what I meant to say. What the hell am I talking about? Oh, yeah, the vibrating bed. It's not sexy to me, the vibrating bed. I can get the same feeling leaning up against the washing machine. <laughs> That's why I can never go back to the laundromat. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Fluff and Fold. Uh, <laughs> some people get crazy with the sex toys, you know, about the vibrating bed and things that vibrate. I'm very vanilla about sex. The last time someone brought something weird and appliance into the bedroom to help with the sex, I'm like, sorry, I don't want to go there, Regis. I'm not interested. <laughs> Which is not to say I don't like a bed with some technology. My, the bed I have right now is the Sleep Master. You know, the, the Sleep Master is fantastic. You, you dial your number in to the, the thing and it gives you a number to sleep on. You sleep, I can sleep very soundly, even if there's a hippo and a glass of wine on the other side of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that hippo loves his wine. <laughs> his wine? So you're gay? Uh, that's right, I'm gay for hippos. <laughs> Call me hungry, hungry. Uh, anyway, the last time I was on a vibrating bed was in a motel south of Chicago. I was driving from St. Louis up to Milwaukee for I don't know why. And all the, you know, the well-known hotel chains were all booked up, so I ended up in this filthy hotel. It's the worst hotel I've ever seen. And I've seen Hotel for Dogs. This place was crap. <laughs> the bed was so dirty. It was one of those hotels that you put more clothes on when you had to lie on the bed because I didn't want my face to touch the sheets and everything. <laughs> it completely ruined the honeymoon. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. Call me Hungry Hungry and Regis and Fluff and Fold and... Anyway, this hotel didn't have, uh, didn't even have the bellhops, and I like bellhops. I, I tip them generously after they've handled my bag. <laughs> I give them more if they bring up the luggage, and I. <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> 
It didn't have a mini bar either. I, no, I don't drink, but what I do is I like to get hold of the little bottles of gin, the, the, the tiny little bottles, because they make you look like a giant. It's like you walk around with a little bottle, you're like, hey, who's the beef eater now, bitch? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Anyway, I knew this. I'm staying in this crappy hotel, and I knew it was a bad idea because I asked the, the at the front desk, the the clerk. I said, uh, "How long?" Uh, you know, I'm like, I, I'm like, I want a room. He's like, "How long?" I'm like, "The whole night." He's like, "Oh, Mr. Swanky wants the full twelve hours. We got a billionaire staying here tonight." And it, it had the security cameras everywhere. I kept waiting for an episode of Cops to break out. <laughs> no, the old ladies from the guillotine coming. Rah, 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 rah. But they've got the high-tech cameras everywhere now, you know. Except here, in the studio. <laughs> I mean, when's the last time you saw a camera this size? Look at the size of this damn thing. What the hell is that? Cameras are like this. You can put a camera in a phone. Not that camera, you got Look at that thing. <laughs> anyway, I'm on, the inter uh, I'm on the computer today, which is a camera in it, about this size. <laughs> And I'm reading, the, the, the town with the most cameras in America is a town called Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And it's got more cameras uh, per capita than anywhere else in the country. And I'm like, why do you need that many? Because Lancaster, Pennsylvania, has got a huge Amish population. All they do is drive around in horse-drawn buggies and, and grow beards. And the men, too, that's what they do. <laughs> do you know the great thing about the Amish? They don't have televisions. You can say anything you like about them and they never complain. <laughs> That's right, Amish people, I am laughing at you. <laughs> they have no idea. They're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't know I'm doing it. I'm safe, safe, I tells you. <laughs> Is that the sound of hooves outside the studio? <laughs> we have to take a break. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. No, 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 no. Don't, don't woo. <laughs> oh, there's no wooing here. We don't do wooing. Wooing's for the other shows. <laughs> what other shows are that, Craig? You know the shows that where people are happy to be there? <laughs> well, who's in the studio audience here then, Craig? And why are you talking to this strange West Coast of England accent? I don't know. Why not? <laughs> We have a studio audience made up entirely of people who didn't get into The Price is Right. <laughs> I understand. So, average retail price? <laughs> Four bucks. Uh, I, I actually got, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine. Oh yeah, I've got one. Uh, he's imaginary, but anyway, he called me and... And he said he was talking to, he went to Albuquerque and he was at the Rattlesnake Museum where this cup comes from. And, and, the, uh, and he was talking to the guy, he said, I'm, I'm the imaginary friend of the, the guy on TV that's got the, he said, he's, wow. He said, the business has shot up since he started, uh, set, you know, doing, the, you know, saying that about the cup from the Rattlesnake Museum. He said, now I move about 40 or 50 of these babies a week. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I'm like... This must be why people advertise on CBS, because if you advertise on CBS, then your stuff will get sold, and then you won't have to go into bankruptcy. <laughs> you know, like GM or something. <laughs> Everybody's very worried that, you know, the DVRs are taking away all the advertising, and then everybody in TV is going to be out of a job. So on behalf of people who, you know, get paid ridiculous amounts of money for this crap, um, please keep buying stuff that you see on TV. <laughs> or else I might have to go back to the chuckle hut. And... <laughs> is there a comedy club called the Chuckle Hut? I always think there probably is one. There was one in London, I think, called the Chuckle Hut. Isn't there one in London? Yeah, there's a Chuckle Hut in London. I'm talking to someone over there that doesn't exist. <laughs> Tricks you learn on TV. You just talk to someone uh, slightly away from the camera. Be like, who's he talking to? He must be. He must have hundreds of friends. No, no, not at all. <laughs> in fact, this is just. I am actually in the corridor of the CBS building. Uh, these people are walking by. If you hear a woo, it's because they've just found out they're about to get into the Price Is Right. <laughs> Do 
Oh, I'm sorry. We have to take a commercial break, apparently. We'll, uh, we'll be right... I, see, I didn't even talk to anybody there. I just made that up in my head. <laughs> like, you're, was he talking to the producer? No, I wasn't talking to anybody. I was like, oh, uh, oh, really? Imaginary guy? Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so we have to take a commercial break. Now, these commercials that are coming up are awesome. <laughs> You're probably going to want a lot of what's on offer here. <laughs> also, CBS gets very nervous when I talk about the advertisers. It's like, don't piss off the advertisers either. And I'm like, what about don't piss me off for a change? What about that? <laughs> and they're like, if we were worried about pissing you off, we wouldn't have you work in this closet for a studio, would we? <laughs> we'll be right back after these excellent commercials, everybody. No, 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 it was a joke. <laughs> I did... I didn't know you were Amish. <laughs> well, if you're Amish, what are you doing watching television? <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, if you're the head of CBS, you probably should watch. Which... <laughs> Listen, I was thinking of building a barn. All right, no, I, I understand, absolutely. All right. Okay. Mm hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye. There's nobody there. I just made it up. It's another thing. <laughs> no one even calls me. play that staring game with people you see you have to stare at each other the longest and see who can just like not break away from it let's do that now <laughs> you're good all right all right do we have time for email tonight uh oh yeah okay right good yeah uh, we're your friends. We want to help you and encourage you in the show. Thanks, friends. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is from Alex in New York uh, City. Uh, Alex says, Dear Craig, what does a female orgasm feel like? Female orgasm feel like? This may surprise you, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> I've never even heard one. Uh, I'm kidding. I have. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hang on, I'll just shoot my cuffs. That's what you do. And then, if you're, if you're an old-timey comic, what you do is you pull your cuffs like You tell a joke, and then you pull your cuffs, and you go... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why I don't do it. Um, <laughs> this is from Aaron in Washington, D.C. Uh, he says, Dear Craig, why did you give such a bad answer to that email you just read? Wow. <laughs> emails come in fast these days, don't they? <laughs> All right, this is from Jeremy in Cedar Rapids in Ohio. Wow, Jeremy in Ohio. That's a tough name to grow up in, with in Ohio, isn't it? Hello, I'm Jeremy. <laughs> Maybe it's a good name. I don't know. Anyone we know called Jeremy that we like? Jeremy Piven. There you are. <laughs> He's a great guy. All right. Um, <laughs> what? Well, you don't even know him. I've met him. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is from Jeremy Piven in Cedar Rapids. Wow. Who knew that Jeremy Piven uh, lived in Cedar Rapids, Ohio? I think he had some bad sushi and then he went to uh, Ohio to get over it. Anyway, uh, dear Craig, says Jeremy, I just came back from a trip to California. Oh, and I tried to get into your show. Oh, but you guys were sold out. Oh, what's up with that? I, I don't know. Um... We don't sell tickets for this show. Do we sell tickets for this show? No, they're, they're uh, talking to a person that doesn't exist. But they're, no, I, they, they're, they're free, the tickets to this show. You can, I, look, I do it for free. Everybody works here for free. <laughs> this is a non-profit organization right here. <laughs> no, uh, we, uh, we don't charge. So if someone charged you, uh, you know, money to try and get into this show, um, I would like to sell you a bridge. Uh, <laughs> 
This is from Nick in McKinney in Texas. Uh, Nick says, Dear Craig, are your interns annoying because I know some very annoying interns? Um, well, they might not be mine just because you find them annoying. Although, I, I, uh, there are interns here. Interns work in this show. We're all kind of interns in a way because none of us get paid. But the difference is that the interns get the uh, college credit. Don't they? They, get a, they get a credit for their college things, you know, so... I don't know much about that because I dropped out of a high school that wasn't even an American high school, but they, the interns work here. I uh, make a point of not talking to them. <laughs> because they're not here that long. I don't want to get attached to them, all friendly, and they're like, oh, hey, and I'm like, hey, how's it going with your young, hopeful life? And then they're gone. <laughs> they're pretty annoying, actually, the, uh, the interns here. Uh, this is from Mel in Bon Terre in Montana. Uh, yes. Uh, this is from, he says, hey Craig, do you have any pet birds? No, and I'll tell you why. I get asked this all the time. People are like, how about a pet bird, Craig? I'm like, no, and I'll tell you, I don't like birds. They're pecky. I don't like anybody who's pecky or feathery. <laughs> I've seen if we had a bird down there, we only got a monkey and a pig. Uh, <laughs> Did you just, oh, a pig? <laughs> you can get swine flu from this. <laughs> oh, a pig. And anyway, look, it's, it, what, you, what, you odd a pig? What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> this is not your friend. Look, this pig will either give you the swine flu or cholesterol. <laughs> I'm kidding. You know what I like about this pig? He looks like he might have been hanging around the uh, guillotine during the French Revolution. <laughs> you know what I think? I think off with his head is what I think. Yes, I'm looking for the crystal meth lady with the cockney accent. <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. Welcome back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> I'm kidding. Am I? I don't know. I never know if I'm kidding or not. That's why I have such a terrible relationship with myself. <laughs> My first guest tonight is an Oscar winner. What the hell is she doing on this show, I hear you ask? Well... She's nice. Uh, she won an Oscar for uh, La Vie en Rose, yeah, which is French for La Vie en Rose. Uh, <laughs> so her new film is called Public Enemies. Johnny Depp's in it. <gasps> oh. No, no, no. He's not here. Uh, <laughs> for this uh, movie is in theaters July the 1st. Take a look at this. Sport. Hit the road, sport. Keep the tip. I ain't getting other people's hats and coats no more, neither. Why'd you do that? Because you're with me now. I don't know anything about you. I was raised on a farm in Mooresville, Indiana. My mama died when I was three. My daddy beat the hell out of me because he didn't know no better way to raise me. I like baseball, movies, good clothes, fast cars, whiskey, and you. What else you need to know? That was good. I like that. Please welcome Marianne Cotillard, everybody. Marianne Cotillard. Marianne, please. How lovely to see you again. How are you? I'm good. You, you I'm sound good. American in this film. Are you American in this film? Well, she, she, she's supposed to be American. Yeah, no, she well, sounds American. Fortunately, she has uh, a f some French blood, so the flavor of French is not out of context. I, I, am, uh, I am surprised. The last time you were here, you were very French. Now you're not so French as I remember you. Do you uh, have you become less French in some way? Um, 
No, 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 I didn't <laughs> think so. No. no, your English is very good. Have you been studying very you. hard? Uh, yeah, I've been working on it. I need a, a coach for the same thing. No, I actually. love your accent. Oh, thank you very yeah. much. I, I see. Now, when I speak French badly, I admit, but when I speak French, French people usually go. Because <laughs> yeah. you're funny. Uh, no, no, yeah. I don't think that's. Uh, <laughs> that may be that, but I don't know. How is uh, how is Paris? You live in Paris, don't you? I well. My base is in Paris, but I I live where where I work now. You have a kind of gypsy French gypsy life. Uh, yeah. Well. Do you play the violin? No, I try to play guitar. Do you really? Yeah. What kind of guitar? Um, a guitar. Mm. <laughs> Let me see if I can help you through this. You know how you get that. You know how you like get electric or like yes, yes. wooden. Wooden, guitar? yes. Wood, wood. Oh, wood. Wood, yeah. Yes. Yeah, because when you play bad, you, it, 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 it's you know you don't hear it that bad. With no. electric, you have, you know. Well, you could you could turn the volume down on the electric guitar. Yeah, but well. But, but why point? bother? Yeah, because yeah. you were you were probably born to rock. Uh, yeah, but right, I'm, yes. I'm on my way. On your way to to rock. To rock. What, what kind yeah. of what kind of music do you like to play then? Um. Um. <laughs> French gypsy music. Well, no, no, I'm I'm more into American music actually, right. but I'm a very bad player. Yeah, but it doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter about how yeah, how I, you play. Yeah, I play it. for myself. Right, that's know. okay. I like the I, idea I, of I've you tried playing the shower, yourself. But it, it really doesn't work. So what you're saying is you play by yourself in the shower? <laughs> Your English is a lot better, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I used to be able to make fun of you doing this kind of thing. I can't. You're like, See? hey, hey. <laughs> no, that's good. Did you have, did you have a special uh, coach, a teacher? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. did. And, uh, she was amazing, and, and and she was very funny because uh, she wanted actually me to forget about focusing on my accent, so we would oh, play focusing, little. Oh, focusing, <laughs> focusing. You can come here any night of the week, darling. I'm telling you. <laughs> Focusing. Yeah, no, yeah, you say it again. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm all about it. No, can you say it? Focusing. Focusing. Yes, that yes. is the way. No, can I say, say it, it legally. You say it illegally. <laughs> it just it sounds a little bit like an English swear word. Are you familiar with the word? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds a little bit like that. Well, it's not that far actually. Um, no, as no long, I mean, as long as you focus, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but me, my work was actually not that far. The word that I didn't. How about the movie? Like, How's the movie? Is the, it was the movie about Johnny Depp's in it. He's handsome. Yeah. Yeah. He speaks French, doesn't he? Yeah, but I, I, I didn't allow myself to speak. Oh French. yeah, because you were doing that. Because yeah. I was doing that thing. Where did you make the film? Did you make it in America? In Chicago, yeah. Oh, that's where they used to have gangsters, you know. Now, of course, they don't have any. <laughs> No, they've got, they, they had a governor there, Governor Blagojevich, and he was, uh, he was focusing on the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard I stories. Think so. yeah. Yeah. He, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think a lot of people use the word focus about... Uh, <laughs> What about the gangster movie? You're a fan of the gangster movies? You like yeah, them? I love gangsters movies. Yeah, it was the first thing I used to watch about in America when I was a kid. I used to watch black and white gangster movies. You know, made me want to be a gangster in America. You? Yeah, um, yeah. You don't think I'd be a good gangster? I think you, you, you are a kind of gangster. <laughs> You're my favorite guest of all time. <laughs> really? Why, why would you say I was a guy? I mean, I love the idea of me being a gangster. I thought I was more a kind of like vulgar, desperate, needy, drunk uncle at a wedding or something. Oh, no, but I, I don't know. I think there, there are a lot of gangsters on TV. Yes. Yes. Oh, boy, you're oh boy, really yeah. nice, aren't you? <laughs> so, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, France then, how's that treating you? All right, you happy in Paris? Everything going okay there? You gonna? Well, I know you say you live where you where you work, yeah. right? but you gotta go back there. It's France. It's springtime. Sometimes, yeah. But yeah. I love my country, yes. really. But I love traveling and and you know discover new cultures. Yeah. What's your favorite place you've been to, aside from America? Peru. Peru, you say? Yeah. Why now, Peru? And India. Peru, because people are nice and it's. They're Peruvian. Very energetic. It's very country. energetic. Yeah. 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 I've never been to Peru. I don't know. You should. Was, it's beautiful. I like I so like nice. where, when people are energetic, as opposed to lazy countries like, like. Canada. 
They're not. I don't think Canadians are lazy. I know. What are you saying, eh? Hey? No, I'm not. It was a joke. It was a joke. God. I'm sorry that, you know, sometimes I say the wrong thing. You got into trouble for that once, didn't you? You said the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, but yeah. Oh, God, that was tricky. But, you know, on, on TV, I, I'm very scared about TV, and I don't know what, half of my brain collapsed. No, I think, I, no, it's, I, I do, that's what the, how the monologue is done here, but the, uh, <laughs> but I think what happens is if you, uh, it, it, sometimes you can get uh, involved in a discussion and end up saying things that you don't really mean. I know, I know that happens to me a lot here. For example, I said something, you know, disparaging about Canada, a country which I love, by the way, love. Not as much as America, but close. <laughs> like Canada, it's close to America. You don't care about my feelings about Canada, and I don't blame you. I, I, I want to talk about your movie too, but I don't know how to get back to it. Um, do you want me to help you? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't know how. <laughs> what should we do? Well, um, what we should probably do is focus in some way. Focus. But you can say it again if you want. Not... Yeah. I didn't no, no. Say... no. No, you don't say, say that. You get in trouble. No, Marion Cotillard, everybody. We'll be right back. next guest is the legendary gossip columnist on uh, The Village Voice, which is a newspaper in New York. Uh, you can get it in The Village, you know, because it, it's The Village Voice. <laughs> I don't know how to help you any more than that, really. <laughs> it's free, that newspaper, isn't it? I think it's free, or maybe it costs money. It'll be one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome The Village Voice gossip columnist, Michael Musto, everybody. Michael Musto. Let's try. Is the Village Voice free or does it cost money? It's free, but if you want to pay, I'll take it. Right, okay. <laughs> no, it's, it, I used to, uh, I used to get this paper when I lived in New York. I used because I especially you used to get on the back. Well, they still have them on the back page there. The uh, and then uh, transsexual hookers are our main advertisers. Yeah, so, uh, it seems like along with futons, which the hookers use. But there used to be, <laughs> there used to be a thing on the back page where the the band they might be giants used to put put a little thing up, and then there would be a number that you would dial. And you could hear a new song. Uh, I think it was one a week. It was, you know, just there was numbers for the hookers too. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm over that now. Thanks very much. <laughs> Do you still live in the village? Do you still live? In no, I never lived in the village. I live in Murray Hill, which is a very generic sort of midtowny kind of environment, which is so wrong for me. But it's accessible to everything. Right. Yeah. Uh, you. Uh, what would you like to be accessible to then in the village? <laughs> which. Uh, um, kind of uh, nothing really nowadays because New York has become very generic in the old days when you were there. I used to live in the East Village in the, in the 80s, which, uh, you know, was, things were a little different then. Yeah, I mean, but if you remember the 80s, Craig, you weren't there. I said I lived there. I didn't say that I remembered it. I said okay. I lived there. I have some receipts to prove it. Other than that, I don't know. <laughs> well, I, don't, I do remember the 80s because I'm the only one in New York who doesn't drink. Right. Uh, I'm like a eunuch at an orgy. Um, <laughs> You want to focus on that one? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, listen, uh, you, do the, you do the gossip uh, stuff. Has gossip changed with the internet, do you think? Has it gotten a little more um, gossipy? It's gotten dirtier. I mean, the, yeah. <laughs> I was the first sort of gossip gang star, the first one to throw figurative stuff in celebrities' faces and bring them down a notch, only when they deserve it. And right. I do it with love. Right. Okay. But nowadays, everyone has a blog. Everyone is throwing the stuff at the celebrities. What about what happened to uh, Perez Hilton? Somebody punched him the other night. Is that, what do you think about that? The, uh... And it was Judy Dench. No, Judy I'm Dench just... punched him? <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, if Judy Dench punches you, you're going to hospital, buddy. That's oh, a, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a different and thing. And if Susan Boyle punches you, you're dead. No, no, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to talk about that. I don't know about other gossip columnists, Craig. I'm oh, here. right. No, You're no, really to talk about myself. Well, yeah, but, <laughs> but here's the thing. Don't you do, do you, do you ever think about the ramifications of the, the people you're talking about? Do you consider their feelings? Or are you kind of more like a serial killer? You just make them, you know, the, 
They're not like, uh, you make them not real. I'm right. sort of a hit and run columnist. I'm like the little Kim of gossips. <laughs> uh, I just pull up and write my Jeez. column and run. Yeah. No, actually, that's not true. I think about everything I write, and it's gone over by uh, libel lawyers and editors, and I, oh, I run really? it anyway. Really? <laughs> yeah. Did, what, now, did the libel lawyers ever say to you, I mean, I, I just finished writing a book, and the lawyer called me up and said, uh, I feel that this uh, particular thing that I talked about, it, I feel it's in poor taste. And I'm like, I don't give a rat's ass what you think. You're a lawyer. Just tell me if it's legal or not. But they, uh, <laughs> but they, they do seem to give their opinions a lot. Do they do well, that bad taste is what I strive for. If someone says it's in bad taste, I'm like, oh, I should make that part longer. Yeah. I want to offend people. I want to ruffle feathers. Really? And when I enter a room at a party, half the room runs away, and that means I'm successful. And it's all the right people running away. It's all the publicists, the hangers-on, all the D-list celebrities come my way. They want the mentions. Well, uh, now, it, <laughs> I've, I've never understood this A, B, C, and D-list, uh, because, uh, you know, it's probably because I'm on the D-list, but the... Uh, <laughs> But I never really understood it. How does, how does one move from uh, one list to the other? Um, you make a bad movie and you go from A to D. You don't even go to the B and C list. Really? And if you remember the Hollywood Squares show, remember that game show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was D list. That, that was, was D list? Yeah, everyone on there, even the center square was D list. At hey, that no, moment. no, no, wait, no. Shadow Stevens, our announcer, was on the center square. You're right, that was That's D list. That's A list. <laughs> That's A list. That Shadow, he's my friend. Okay, yeah. okay. By the way, I don't think you should do a book. I think you should do an audio tape called Scotch Tape. <laughs> okay, do a book. Do a book. No, I don't know. I mean, I, you, they, they, you got a reaction out of them. It's more than I could. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, no, I, I, I wonder about the, about the gossip columnist. I wonder how, if, if, you're, if the business is going away with the internet because there is no... It's like it's so spread out, isn't it? Yeah, but that's good for the business. It's everywhere. Is People, it really a business? I've made quite a lovely living. I, I may be wearing bedroom slippers from Kmart, yeah. uh, but I've made quite a wonderful living <laughs> doing why, why it. Why are you wearing bedroom slippers from Kmart? I, <laughs> I was hoping you would ask. I have really super large, wide feet, and you know what that means. Big penis? No. <laughs> Big socks. Oh, I, I, I'm sucks. sorry. I, I, double entendres is not something I okay. went for here. I wish you were right, believe me. <laughs> but no. um, I, I can't get any shoes that fit me, including custom-made ones that I spent thousands really? of so dollars you, you on. You have to wear... Uh, Bedroom slippers from Kmart. Yes. That's it? Uh, yeah. what, if, what if you wanted to be a tap dancer? <laughs> oh, like Larry Craig? Oh. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. Oh. He's the one who tap danced in the bathroom. Yes, yes, okay. yes, I know. Yeah, no, I got it. I skipped the middle man. I'm not much of a dancer. I just grab. <laughs> That's charming, Mike. <laughs> As I go from D to Z. No, no, you don't. Now, listen, what about, uh, what about outing people? You've done that a couple of times. Like, you know, people who are... Well, I know. outed you as straight, and that almost hurt your career. Yeah, it did, actually. Yeah. I, got, I got into trouble when I played the gay hairdresser in that movie, and you outed me as being a straight man. I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> and that was a real stretch, playing a gay hairdresser. That's like a gay gossip columnist. <laughs> you know, it's like... Are you, are you, are you coming out? <laughs> <laughs> I guess what Clay Aiken too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Adam some, Lambert too. I, that no, see, it always that amazes really me. That really threw me. People always get all very excited <laughs> about Adam Lambert is gay. Clay Aiken is gay. I'm like, what? What are you people not seeing that I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, doesn't that? I mean, it's. But so it was so obvious. I mean, not only that they like show tunes and Liza Minnelli, right? And, and want to marry Liza Minnelli, actually. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, come on. What's what's going to be next on the cover of Rolling Stone? Sky. Yep, I'm blue. Uh, it, these are obvious, obvious revelations. But I like to out people because I think, what the heck? It, gossip delves into private lives of public figures. Right. And it's homophobic to kind of leave out the fact that a lot of them are gay. In fact, all of them are gay. Yes, they are. It's true. <laughs> Every, everybody in show business is gay. Except Rosie O'Donnell. Oh. <laughs> well, there's yeah. a surprise. Uh, uh, I'm not the best reporter. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely to talk to you. Michael Musto, everybody. Thank you. We'll be right back. <laughs> I have something to announce. <laughs> that cat's gay. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night.